Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on agricultural versus industrial development. In our previous lesson, we discussed the National Development Plan in the EPRDF. Particularly, we discussed the four development plans, including the Current Growth and Transformation Plan, or GTP. Students, different views or paradigms have been adapted for the development of the country. Today, we will discuss the opposing views of agricultural versus industrial development and the interlinkage that exists between these two sectors. In the past, the role of agriculture in economic development was largely considered as passive and supportive or secondary. Agriculture was seen as a low productivity, traditional sector that only passively contributed to development by providing food and employment. In the 1950s and 60s and until the 1970s, the dominant view has been that governments of developing countries should focus on extracting the greatest possible economic surplus from agriculture and use it for industrial development. Students, remember, during this period in Western economies as well as in developing countries of Latin America and Africa, the industrial sector was given priority. In contrast, less emphasis had been given to the agricultural development. This development strategy was based on the following assumptions. One of the assumptions is that developing countries should follow the development path of Western countries, which is heavy industrialization. The other assumption is that labor productivity is typically lower in agriculture than in industry, justifying the need for industrialization. The third assumption is that the industrial sector has the largest potential to adopt technology and create forward and backward linkages with the other sectors and that it gets increased returns. Students, as a result of the assumptions we just mentioned, developing countries, including Ethiopia, started to establish import substituting industries. Until the 1970s, these countries taxed agriculture and drained the surplus to promote industrial development that substitutes imports. Students, I hope you know what import substitution industrialization means. Import substitution industrialization is a strategy that aims to replace imported industrial products with domestically produced industrial products. This strategy requires the establishment of local industries. Students, before we discuss what happened in 1950s, 60s, and 70s as a result of the strategy, I want you to discuss among yourselves the concept of forward and backward linkage. Take the sugar industry as an example. You have two minutes. Thank you. 
I hope you've explained the concept. Now, let me explain the concept with the help of an animation. The sugar industry has backward linkage with sugar cane farms. Sugar cane is used as an important input for sugar production. The sugar industry has also a forward linkage with food processing and energy production. Sugar is used as an important input for the production of food staff such as cakes, cornflakes, and so on. By the 1970s, it was observed that the strategy of pursuing industrial development by ignoring the agricultural sector could not be sustained due to many reasons. Now, I want you to list some of the possible reasons for the failure of industrialization strategy that ignored the development of agriculture. Please brainstorm as a group in three minutes. Students, did you list the possible reasons? Very good. Now, let me give you some of the reasons why the 1950s and 60s import substituting industrialization strategy that ignored the agricultural sector failed. Some of the reasons for the failure of the industrialization strategy of 1950s and 60s include lack of foreign currency to import raw materials and spare parts for the industries. Lack of technical and managerial capability to run the industries. Limited market for the industrial products 
due to low income. Accumulation of external debt due to excessive borrowing for the industrialization. In the 1970s, criticism on the strategy of heavy industrialization that ignores agricultural development emerged. These arguments stressed the development of the agricultural sector as a requisite to industrial development. Before we discuss the second view, I want you to discuss in groups of three the importance of developing the agricultural sector to economic development. You have three minutes. I hope you had a good discussion. Now, let me present the argument made in favor of agricultural development. The importance of agricultural development can be discussed at three levels. That is, at farm household level, at rural economy level, and at a national economy level. First, let's discuss the benefits of agricultural development at farm household level. At farm household level, agricultural development leads to increased farm employment, which causes improvements in wages and labor employment. Extensive farming refers to the increase in the area of land cultivated, whereas intensive farming refers to the use of improved technology to increase productivity of a piece of land. Students, let's proceed to the benefit of agricultural development at rural economy level. The following animation illustrates the benefits. 
As we discussed earlier, when agricultural development occurs, rural household income increases. This in turn leads to the following benefits. Increased investment by rural household on the non-farm sector, such as agro-processing. Better nutrition and health among the rural community. Increased investment in education by rural people. More tax revenue collection and increased supply for infrastructure by local governments. And reduced prices of food for rural inhabitants. Students, and now let's discuss the benefits of agricultural development to the national economy. Reduced prices of food and raw materials raise real wages of urban poor, reduces wage costs of non-farm sector. Foreign currency earning allows import of capital goods and essential inputs for non-farm production. Generation of savings and taxes from farming allows investment in non-farm sector, creating jobs and incomes in other sectors. Release of farm labor due to increased farm productivity allows production in other sectors. I hope you've understood the different views in relation to agriculture versus industry and economic development. Currently, there is a consensus that developing countries with high potential for agricultural development and where small farmer households dominate, the rural poor should give high priority to agricultural development. This helps them to reduce poverty and ensure economic growth. At the same time, it should be known that the industrial sector supports the development of the agricultural sector. The Agricultural Development-Led Industrialization Strategy, or ADLI Strategy, stressed that increasing agricultural productivity of small farm households expands internal demand for intermediate and consumer goods produced by domestic industry and helps support the drive towards industrialization. I hope you know that Ethiopia has become a good example for ADLI or ADLI being successful in ensuring fast economic growth and for reducing poverty in rural areas. Before we end today's discussion, let me remind you the main points. Today, we discussed that in the 1950s, 60s and 70s, agriculture was seen as a secondary and supportive sector. Developing countries attempted to pursue industrial development by exploiting the agricultural sector without developing it. However, the import substitution industrialization strategy could not be successful. Recently, the importance of the agricultural sector to economic development and its linkage with the industrial sector has gained recognition. In the next lesson, you will learn more about the debate on the agricultural versus industrial development. Until then, goodbye everyone.